You're live. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Simulcast on both stations. Yeah. She has to flip the switch in there. Uh, so we can go on both. <laughs> Multitasking at its finest. Yeah, that's okay. We'll get Jen coming in. <laughs> good Hi, morning, Jen. Wanda, Hi, everyone. Sandra, Little, Marie, good morning. Hi Ace. Your dad's Hi Dad. I know it's because my brother's at work. <laughs> Better be at work. <laughs> Called out on Facebook Live. Alright, you ready? Yep. Welcome to Today and You. I'm Jennifer Blackwell. And I'm Teresa Strong. We are here live as we are weekdays from 9 to 10 on Z93 Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com, and the FTS Automotive Facebook Live feed. Yes, and if you do not currently follow us on Facebook Live, we encourage you to do so. It's just a way to get a behind the scenes of what goes on. Uh, on behind the scenes with Z93 Outlaw Country and MonsterMediaYuma.com. I'll go to commercial break. Jennifer and I stay live the entire hour. Plus, it's a way to interact if you have any questions or comments for our guests or you just want to be a part of the conversation. You can do so right there on Facebook Live. You are correct. And we have a full show today, three different guest segments to mm -hmm. bring you news and information about things happening right here in the Yuma community. Today is March 6th, and we are opening up the text lines right now to give you a chance to enter to win tickets to see Bostics at Cocopa Casino this Saturday. The concert will be on the casino event lawn. Beautiful weather in store, so you mm -hmm. can kick back and enjoy the great sounds. And it's, again, it's this Saturday. Value is $40 for the pair. All you need to do is text the keyword WIN, W-I-N, to 928-343-0993. It is a 21 and over event, so please keep that in mind. And it's Bostics featuring David Victor, formerly of Boston. Yes, and for complete contest rules, just go to MonsterMediaYuma.com. All right, now we mentioned several guests coming up on the show today. We are going to be having um, several different people come in. <laughs> There's some weird, weird sounds going on I here. I know, right? Um, we have individuals that will be here from the Commandant, Commandant's own U.S. Marine Drum and Bugle Corps. Mm -hmm. They're going to have several performances here in the Yuma community, and Effie with Arizona Western College will be on air with them. Then we have Leanne McCall and Angel Medell with the Yuma Coyotes American Youth Football. There's a free clinic coming up. <coughs> yes, it sure is. We're going to talk about that. And Pamela, I'm not sure how to say her last name, Dropala. That, well, that's we'll have what to correct I'm us. Yes. She is a local author and illustrator, and she has a new book called The Fruitful Yuma Valley, Stories of Yuma's Farm Workers. And it's part of the Garden Talk and Tea Series tomorrow at the Sanguinetti House Museum. Sounds exciting. Sure is. And... For those of you, if you do follow us on Facebook, you got a little sneak peek earlier about the those Bostics concert tickets. So it always pays to follow us on Facebook. And we, we share the information on both the station page and our own pages if you happen to follow one or the other. And there are multiple ways that you can always reach out to us. Now, we posted earlier a little reminder about our <coughs> Firehouse Subs birthday shout-outs. Yes. Because you can go to our website at monstermediayuma.com. Click on the Today in Yuma tab, and there's the little birthday entry form, courtesy of Firehouse Subs. You can enter there, or today I just posted a reminder 
if anyone had birthdays, they could uh, share them right there with us on Facebook. And we got we, we got quite, quite a few. few. <laughs> we got we, quite a few that we way. We did, and we want to remind you that Firehouse Subs, the Firehouse Public Safety Foundation, is saving lives through donation grants. So keep that in mind when you shop or buy a meal at Firehouse Subs. Now, if you are the winner, we take all the birthdays for the week mm -hmm. and we throw them into a box and we have a guest or a, a third yeah. party. <laughs> yes, today, Foodie Licious Janice drew the winner's name for us, but we have all of them thrown into a drawing. They <coughs> will then draw one winner for the week and they get a medium sub, a drink, <coughs> and a dessert from Firehouse Subs. Mm -hmm. And again, all you need to do is just get your entry in. It can be your own birthday. We've already received a few of those for the next few weeks. Yes, we sure have. Again, no shame in that because the subs are delicious at Firehouse Subs. Today's birthday shout-outs go out to Julia Chavez. We also have Nina Owen celebrating a birthday and Terry Knight. They are sharing, sharing birthdays with some famous people like Tyler, the creator. Uh -huh. Also, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq is 45 today. And Michelangelo, the painter, was born on this date way back in 1475. And actress Connie Britton, she's in that new Fox series, 911. It's pretty good. I like it. She plays a dispatcher in that new show. And Jake Arietta, he's a baseball player, or is it Arietta? <coughs> Arietta. Arietta. And Luke Costello of Abbott and Costello fame. Well, there we go. Lots of birthdays today. And we have another special local birthday for a, I believe she's three. Oh my goodness. Little Layla, or neighbor baby, as we have come to know her over the years, is yes. celebrating a birthday. And we want to wish her a very special day. Happy birthday, baby girl. That's right. Now, today is also National Dress Day. And I'm not, I didn't investigate further. I'm sorry. I don't know if that's actually wear a dress or get dressed. I was going to say, you know what? We didn't get the actual, like, wear a dress memo today. We did, we were on the same wavelength with our color coordinations again <laughs> but actual dress day at least we got dressed We're, ter seriously <laughs> Teresa and I do not coordinate the day before we do not plan yesterday I had burgundy pants she had a burgundy shirt and yep. today we completely flip-flop she has red pants black shirt I have red shirt black pants I, I don't and know how it, it, We couldn't plan it better if we actually tried. No. <laughs> Anita is still under the weather, and Foodie Delicious Janice left the room hacking up a lung. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I don't know how. <laughs> I, I'm glad she went outside. Leave those germs. Like I, I said, I think, I've been fighting it and well, keeping it away. Her voice is gone because she was at midnight at the Oasis for a long time throughout the weekend. Yeah. And there's a lot of the times if you're talking over the bands, you want to visit with people too. Yeah, exactly. So you're kind of stretching the limits of your, your vocal cords there. I think that and then some of the winds didn't help her either yeah but um she'll she'll grab a drink of water and head back in she'll soon. be fine we are we're, we're your guy uh, our facebook live camera is sitting on the <laughs> bookcase right now so if not we're going to put effie to work she, she's here <laughs> early from awc hey we're all about multitasking here in the studio exactly exactly well, it's also national dentist day and Aww. i have an amazing dentist and not just because i didn't have any cavities last week <laughs> but I've, I've been going to the same guys jace was four and so that's a uh, 16 years now uh -huh. and we, we love dr ogie in his office so big shout out to them national frozen food day frozen food huh that could be any kind of frozen food we we were making dinner last night we actually cooked at home and we were making different things the the guys wanted steak i was gonna say everybody wanted something different well they they were having steak and i was having uh chicken and peppers uh -huh. I, something that i cooked together and jeff goes hey Tell me the expiration on this package. It was some kind of hash browns. And I go, that would be 2016. So then he was curious as to how long <laughs> potatoes generally can keep if frozen. And they're one of the foods that's not recommended past the best if used by date. Yes, definitely. And we went through a number of things and realized that we really need to clean the freezer <laughs> out because we, didn't, we had a lot of expired things. You know, we're pretty good. Usually when we get... So put things in the freezer. We're usually good about using it either that week or that next week. It doesn't sit in there very, very we, long. We have the deep freeze, and that's where I put like the big bags of chicken. Yeah. Because I like I cook a, a lot of chicken. It started off for for Jace when he was having his chicken shakes for protein. Uh, I know. Has that uh, stopped? Uh, I think it's taken a little bit of a backseat because he's doing other things. Okay, good. Uh, other healthy things, but I like to cook it up for myself and just have chicken breasts for, for my dinner. Yeah. And so that one has been pretty much well maintained, but it's the inside freezer because we have all the little drawers. Yeah. And stuff gets hidden down there. And I'll, I'll go through phases. I love peas. 
You do not like peas. I cannot stand I will peas. Eat, I will eat a pan of, uh, or a, a bag of steam in the bag peas. Uh huh. I'll just have that for dinner myself one night. Oh, that, that's probably why they feed themselves. I would feed myself too if you, you were just eating peas. It doesn't make sense. I, I, vegetables now, but peas is still not one that I, you know, it's. And I'm my cousin Evie. If you're listening, she's gonna laugh because she she still brings up this scenario. We we were eating something that had peas, and I could not leave the table until I ate the peas. Oh, I was gagging through it, and I I could and you know me, yeah. I did not like vegetables, green vegetables at that until a few years ago. So for me trying to choke these peas down, it forever is stuck in my mind, and I will never ever try a peeing it. Now, if it's in a stew or something like that, that's fine because it takes the flavor of the stew. But just a bag of peas? No, no. I will definitely be making my own dinner at your house if you're having peas. How about National Oreo Cookie Day? My son loves it. I, Oreo cookies are not my favorite. I'm a snickerdoodle girl, but my son loves them. But if you, have, if you, if you had to pick peas or Oreos? Oreos. <laughs> definitely it's, Oreos. I would pick the peas. I love peas. Now this last one sounds really good to me. National White Chocolate Cheesecake Day. I'm a cheesecake girl. That's, I, I like it plain. I don't like the chocolate cheesecake. Of course you But I like, I like cherries on top. Uh-huh. Was it uh, Janice brought one in with strawberries or raspberry? There was some kind of sauce on it. I don't know. It was good, though. The recent one. And, and I'll eat around the sauce just to get the plain cheesecake in that. <laughs> I'm kind of basic, okay? Just a little. Just a little, Jennifer. I, I didn't say it. You did. Uh, I, I, it's okay. I called myself out on that. Yeah, uh, Lisa says, is anyone, anyone else getting interrupted in the broadcast? Yes. Um, even myself watching it on my phone, it's cutting in and out for some reason. Technology is not being our friend today, but we're bearing through it. But we appreciate our technology. Yes, we do. We don't want to make her mad. <laughs> yes, we do. I've been, I've been known to rub the copier on occasion just to keep her happy. Is that, oh, I do. No. That's not the way to get to that copier. I'm just letting you know right now. <laughs> I'm All nice right. to it, too. <laughs> what, what I'm nice to it, too. Sometimes you have to give it some um, harsh words in order for it to work. <laughs> well, Foodie Delicious Janice is here, and she's going to be live on location if she has a voice on Saturday. I told her, I go, don't say anything between now and then. No. You have to preserve that voice. But she's going to be down at Immaculate Conception Church on Avenue B, right down the road here from the station, broadcasting for Sunset Community Health Center. Exactly. They're having the, the children's health fair over there, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Is this the Little Heroes one? Yes. Yes. Little Heroes? Oh, yes. This one's going to be cute. They, they're they encouraging, you know, the <coughs> kiddos actually uh, maybe dress up as their favorite hero, or dress up just in general. Um, they're going to have lots of games. They're going to be making slime, all that. And they're, the Absolutely. reason they're doing it in the the Immaculate Conception um, parking lot is because they're under construction at their office right now. Right, they're expanding. They are. And so um, they are going to be right there, right next to it. They're, they're literally neighbors to the church. Um, so it'll be in the parking lot right there at, at Immaculate Conception. And a lot of fun stuff. But inf information about health, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. They do health screening. They do different glucose screenings. They can help you with insurance. Um, all that kind of stuff is there, and it's all free. So get down there on Saturday. What time, Janice? 8 to 10. 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. All right, bright and early. Now, I'm really excited for Friday's show because Cutter and Hillary from the Humane Society of Humor are, st are stopping by to talk about <coughs> yoga with cats. Mm -hmm. And they also have a vaccination clinic coming up Saturday. It will be at the Foothills, the substation for the sheriff's office, mm -hmm. out next to the main library. And that will be from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. because you're running out of time for those 2018 vaccination clinics. You'll need to get your pets in. Question. Yes. Would you try yoga if it involved cats? Yes, I would. I would. I've done yoga with my son. The cat kind of lays there and watches. I don't know if she's <laughs> so much into it. She's th I, she's 13. She's thinking, my yoga years are past me. She's pretty active, though. Oh, how funny. All right, it's time to take a break. We are going to be coming back with the Commandant's own U.S. Marine Drum and Bugle Corps and Epi from Arizona Western College after the break. The show is brought to you by Classic Accounting. They have 30 years of experience and knowledge to benefit you. Ask about their advanced program. You can get up to a $2,500 advance while your tax refund processes. No additional fees or APR cost if you use the program. Give them a call at 343-1040. And Sprague Sports, Sprague's offers training courses like 
Arizona CCW, First Shot, Hunter Education, and more. Plus, there's always a gunsmith on duty. You can find them on 32nd Street next to Lowe's. And quick refrigeration. They're another amazing family-owned and operated business, and they've been heating and cooling the Yuma area since 1955. We have 80s in the forecast, but it won't be long before those triple digits are here. Get your unit checked well before summer. You can go to GetCoolQuick.com. And Advocate Pest and Wildlife Services, they offer wildlife control like feral cat trapping, snake and skunk relocation, and pigeon extraction. You can give them a call at 928-343-9149, message them on Facebook, Instagram, or follow them on Snapchat. We'll be back with Today in Yuma after the break. Littles call now. Holy Ghost! I wonder if you can just tell Alexa, turn on Today in Yuma. I know. All right, gentlemen. <coughs> Hi. Sorry, you guys ready? Come it on got in. behind that one like side of the throat, and I over yeah. one chair there. I could Jesus, not. I have some of those cough drops. All right, are my two I speakers? Cough. I'm gonna have you sit. Oh, yeah, with the goose part of our decor that didn't They're actually get all the way up yet. All right, the two that are yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Evie's been here hanging out. Oh, with very well. So close. Hey. So far. Yeah, we'll get you in just a little bit, okay? Hello. I'll see you Go on in that door right there. Okay. Yeah. We'll be there shortly. You're the camera. Yeah, I'm the okay, camera. Okay, very well. Let me get over here. <laughs> that way I can get everybody. Right on up. And you, you two are going to share, so right, you're going gonna to get cozy. <laughs> Just pull the whole thing. Well, Is it not moving? Oh, hold on, hold on. Right. There you go. Right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. You're not speaking today? I think it has some wild life. No. That's fine. All right. I had my little. All right. <laughs> now, what, are, what, are, what are your official titles? Um, there you I go. Am, uh, my rank is Corporal. I'm Corporal Kyle Smith, part of the Drum and Bugle Corps. Uh, my rank is Corporal uh, Joshua Newton, part of the Sarah Newton. Sorry, Joshua, what? Newton. Okay. All right, we have about 40 seconds. Little says, I don't need a lot of connection, just a little. <laughs> ba -dum -bum. Hey, we have the drum and bugle for here. Maybe they can do this like that. <laughs> Except I don't see any instruments. We often ask for a drum roll when we announce a winner. Oh, uh, okay. And we're, we're not very good. <laughs> Thank you, Echo. You too. Alright, we're ready? Come in after this. And you guys won't, won't need headphones. Most of our people interact on social media, so. And then the mics are very directional, so when it's your turn, kind of go. Don't be afraid to grab it or get right up close. We'll to turn it. you up a little bit too, so. <laughs> Little, come down here. We have donuts here. Larry brought us donuts. Who? Larry. Larry Ziegler? No. Uh, Munoz. Oh, oh, that's awesome. Did we get what we needed yeah. for him? Awesome. Ready? Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We are here live with several individuals in the studio today. We are going to start off. We have... Effie from Arizona Western College, thank you for coming in. Yes, thanks for having us. Now, is it Rosen? How do you say your last Effie name? Effie Rosen Rosenblum. Okay, yes. that's what I thought. But yep. It sounds like a, a book character. It does. It? <laughs> that's yeah. a cool name. That's a cool name. <laughs> and then we also have Corporal Kyle Smith and Lance Corporal Joshua Newton in the studio with us today. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, nice to be here. Thank you. Thank now, you so much. We, all, we have you all here because there are several events taking place in the Yuma community this week. And you are with the Commandant's own U.S. Marine Drum and Bugle Corps, correct? That is correct. All right. Well, one of those performances will be out at Arizona Western College. And this year, the format, not so much the format, but the days are flip-flopped a little bit. And that's one of the key things we wanted to let people know about. Effie, can you speak to the performance that will be taking place at Arizona Western College? Yes, it's not actually at the college. It's going to be at Veterans Memorial Stadium, which is at Gila Ridge High School. We normally do the show on Friday at that venue, but we've switched with COPA this year, so we're going to have Thursday night at the Veterans Memorial Stadium. And then Friday will be at COPA. Friday will be at COPA. And there is a third performance taking place. Yes, ma'am. Where will that be at? It's going to be to, uh, tomorrow morning at, I believe, 9 p.m. Or 9 a.m. as you were. I apologize. Wednesday morning? Yes, at uh, okay. NCAS uh, Yuma um, base. All right. And is that open to just uh, personnel and individuals on base or open to the community? That's open to everybody. It's a free show on base. You just uh, go ahead and show them your 
regular state ID, military ID if you have it, and they'll let you in and you can just go ahead and enjoy the show. All right. Well, I, I like that there are three different opportunities this year. Now, what are some of the things we can expect to see from this performance? Um, so for the Sound Drill Platoon, it's going to be a precision drill with a Marching 24, about a 12-minute performance with an inspection sequence. And um, that would be pretty much it from the Sound Drill Platoon itself. And from the Drum and Bugle Corps, um, we're a lot like um, a, a marching band, like a high school marching band, if you've ever seen those shows. Um, but we are the only professional Drum and Bugle Corps. Basically what that means is we don't have any woodwinds um, in our unit, and we do a standard marching show. Uh, again, it's ours performance is about 12 minutes long. Um, lots, of, lot, lots of fast tempos, crazy drill, loud music. It's a lot of fun this year. Um, and then afterwards, we park it up in the back corner, and then we play a more ceremonial, old-school, military-type um, show to um, kind of go along with the Silent Drill Platoon's performance. Okay. And, you know, this, the, you guys come, I, I, don't know, I know may not be necessarily your team that came last time, but there is, we get one about every year that comes through. Have you guys been here before, or is this your first time here? This is my third Yuma. Um, oh, wow. And I know the Silent Jill Platoon, you guys cycle out a yeah. little bit quicker than we do. This is my third y Yuma as well. It's oh, awesome. wow, okay. Well, I understand you guys think it's been a little cool here lately. You're used to coming to Yuma for the warm weather. Definitely. It has been a little chilly this year. And it's going to be warming up after you leave. There you go. <laughs> 80s. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I think it was the, we had the Army band that was here before. Uh -huh. They all have to be over six feet tall. Any requirements like that for you individuals? Interesting. <laughs> Um, so for the Silent Drill Platoon, it's usually 5'9 to 6'2, um, roughly a, no a normal size male. Um, we're not looking for anything like certain about a certain individual. If they just have what we we're looking for, usually uh, they will take them through a course. And if they happen to pass the course, then that's when they make the Silent Drill Platoon, and that's when we come out to Yuma and do our job. Well, Lance Corporal Newton, this is your third time here. What type of background do you have, though, in the military? In the military? So, me personally, I went through boot camp, then I went through ITB, which is Infantry Training Battalion, and from there you get uh, picked to get sent to Marine Barracks, Washington, and from there you'll go through a course called SDS, which is Silent Drill School, and uh, mine was three months long, and then from there, out of, uh, I believe, 90 Marines, 90 Infantry Marines, they'll choose 15 through 10 to 15, and then from there, that's when you're part of the Silent Drill Platoon and go ahead and come to Yuma, Arizona, and train from there. Okay. So did you actually have to seek out the silent drill team or they just kind of pick, you, you go through the course and they kind of picked you out of all of them? So all the Marines that go to uh, Marine Barracks Washington um, automatically have to go through that uh, school. So oh, it's okay. kind of the best out of the 90 who get chosen to be a part of the silent drill platoon. Well that's pretty elite. Well, yeah, definitely. All right, now what about your background, Corporal Smith? Um, I personally have no uh, family history of military, um, so I'm kind of the first. Um, I specifically auditioned for the Marine Drum and Bugle Corps uh, because I studied music in college, music is my passion, and I wanted to join an elite music group. Um, that was the best option for me at the time, and I'm, uh, so I ended up here. I went through the same boot camp. Um, I went through um, Marine Combat Training, which is a kind of a, a condensed version of the Infantry Battalion. Um, and then I just went straight to 8th and I in Marine Barracks, Washington and uh, got on-the-job training there. All right, well, it sounds really interesting. A lot of people don't understand the, the different processes that are involved to make this all happen. Now, how large are the teams? How many individuals are on, in each of the groups? So on the Silent Drill Platoon, there's about, I want to say, 34 Marines, but there's only a marching 24. So we, have, uh, we perform a challenge day, and then uh, the best out of the tw uh, 34 will be on the 24. Okay, and that's cool. the people who will perform for the season. Okay, for, and how long does the season last? Um, roughly, I want to say six months, a little more than half the year. Oh, wow, okay. And how much, what, what type, is there a number of performances that are kind of standard within that six-month period? So other than the BCDs that we perform, we'll have uh, NFL games, like we'll p perform halftime shows, uh, other colleges, who, really whoever uh, seeks out and wants the Silent Drill to, Silent Drill Platoon to perform for them, that's what we'll do. Okay. Um, the Drum and Bugle Corps is about 90 strong, but um, same as them, we, we only march between 60 and 70 on the field. Um, and then we have a lot of uh, alternates or, or non-performing members that, that take care of the logistics behind the scenes. Um, 
We have a kind of a sporadic but much longer season. Um, we start learning the show in February. That's what we're doing here. And then our last performance of this show will be in late October at uh, Bands of America Finals. Um, we typically do that show. Uh, but we don't perform the show constantly. It's maybe like once a month, twice a month sort of thing throughout the whole year. So it's not something you really get bored with because you hear a lot of artists that are tired of performing this and that, especially the big hit songs. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, I hear that one more time. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that happens to us too much. Now, how long will the show last here in Yuma? Well, you, you know, there's three different performances taking place, but what can we expect as far as the length of the show? Um, it's just under an hour, I believe. Um, the Drum and Bugle Corps goes on first. We do our about 15-minute uh, segment. Then we block it up in the corner of the field. The Silent Drill Platoon comes on. Uh, we, we play them on. We do some ceremonial stuff. They do their portion. Um, and then the, the, the main event, the Color Guard, comes out, and we play... The national anthem. We uh, the, our announcer talks about um, what the battle colors mean, what they represent. Then we do a, a traditional pass and review, which is like a parade thing that um, that military units do. Um, and then that's the end of the show. So just under an hour is the f total length. All right. Now Effie again is here with Arizona Western College. Now parking will be available in the Gila Ridge High School lots. And will there be any kind of shuttling available? Yes, we've had people in the past that had difficulty walking the distance from the parking lot over to the stands. So this year we're going to offer a shuttle service for people who need assistance from the Handicap and VIP parking lot area. So we're going to have that available this year to help people out and get more people the opportunity to come. And again, the show is at Gila Ridge High School. That's where Veterans Memorial Stadium is located. And it starts at 7. Gates are opening when? At 6 p.m. Okay. A yep. lot of people like to get there early and get yes. the good seats, but I don't know that there's a bad seat at Veterans Memorial. No, not at all. And we're going to have concessions this year, too, so we'll have snacks out there, drinks. Is there a cost to get in? It is free and open to the public, so we want everybody to come out and enjoy the show. And please Perfect. spread the word, because there might be people that, that aren't listening right now. They're just not able to, and we want as many people to show up. Again, because so much hard work goes into this from all aspects of it. You know, Arizona Western College with the coordination at Veterans Memorial and uh, obviously our military that, that work diligently to make this happen. Again, there are three performances. The first will be Wednesday morning on board Marine Corps Air Station Yuma at 9 a.m., that is open to the public, but make sure that you have all of your um, necessary paperwork in order to access the, the air station. And then Thursday at Veterans Memorial and Friday at COFA. What time will Friday be again at COFA High School? It's going to be at uh, 7 p.m. as well. Okay, and gates will probably open about an hour early just to allow the, the crowds to come in. Now, Teresa, is COFA still under construction? Is that going to impact parking? You know, parking? Um, not necessarily because I know that the top parking lot is open last I seen if you go past the main entrance just a little ways um, you'll see the entrance to like behind the bleachers you can still park there and of course you can always drive down um, you just can't go up next to the new building that they're building you have to either go off Avenue Way or off 32nd Street gotcha all right some great information today we are looking forward to uh, catching one of those performances that, that you gentlemen will be involved with. And again, we thank you so much for coming to our community. You know, Yuma's a great place to come. And what, do you guys have a favorite place that you'd like to play? Just overall, I'm putting you on the spot yeah, there. That's, that's they usually one. like Yuma because it's warm and it's not warm right now. I'll, I'll, I'll steal that answer. If you don't mind. <laughs> well, it's, pro it's warmer than many other places across the nation right now. I'll so definitely have to have a chat with our local weather lady and get her <laughs> back in line. You know what? I accept no responsibility, <laughs> but our tagline is Yuma where we never have to shovel sunshine. Definitely. There we go. Might be 115 in the summer, but hey, we don't have to shovel that. <laughs> All right, again, we want to thank Effie Rosenblum from Arizona Western College and Corporal Kyle Smith and Lance Corporal Joshua Newton for stopping by and talking about the Commandant's own U.S. Marine Drum and Bugle Corps and the Silent Drill Team, all the great events taking place here in our community this week, and they're free. Oh, that's even well, better. Like Little says on Facebook, it's free like America. There we go. <laughs> all right, thank you all so much for coming in. It's time to take our Lotus Day Spa and Salon selfie out in the courtyard. We'll be back after the break. We'll, we will have Leanne McCall and Angel Medell with the Yuma Coyotes American Youth Football Team here to talk about a free clinic. It's today in Yuma on Z93, Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com, and the FTS Automotive Facebook Live Feed. The show is brought to you by Classic Accounting. Make your appointment to get your 2017 taxes done at Classic Accounting at their Yuma or Foothills location. Call 343-1040 to schedule your appointment today. 
and Sprague Sports, check out the Sprague's difference. Buy, sell, trade, or consign firearms with free expert appraisals. Sprague's offers local price matching and a lifetime warranty. You can find them on 32nd Street next to Lowe's. And we are getting closer to Friday. We're airing on the side of optimism here. Yes. It is free filter Friday coming up in four days, and all you need to do is take your old air filter down to quick refrigeration. They're dusty. They're dirty. You need to change them out often here in Yuma, where it can get pretty dusty. They will swap it out and give you a brand new standard one inch air filter for free at 190 West 10th Street. That's quick refrigeration. And our wonderful friends over at Advocate Pest and Wildlife Services have been servicing the Yuma area for over 20 years. They are licensed with the Arizona Game and Fish Department for safe, humane wildlife relocation. You can give them a call at 928-343-9149. Better yet, go like them on Facebook. They have an uh, awesome fair giveaway going on right now. Yes, they do. It's Today in Yuma. We'll be back after the break. All righty, guys. Not to squish you guys all into a selfie now. Yeah. You guys can squish in too. Yeah. Come on in. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Busy morning here. Hello, hello. 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 <laughs> and muscly. Yes. And muscly. For Leanne, yeah, you, you're related. <laughs> Morning, Chrissy. The rumor on Go the ahead and grab uh, the microphone. <coughs> right up. Bring it all the way up. Yeah, right up to your mouth there. Right there. Perfect. And their flyer is on. It was on page two. Yeah, I moved it. I moved it bump back a little bit. There you go. There. That's it. You guys won't need headphones. Usually only if people ask stuff on Facebook. Ah, okay. I don't you, normally work with a lot of talk in my mouth. I'm just says, trying not to choke. Jenna still sounds like she's getting the worst end of it. She's she's better today. She can talk today. Yeah, I had to put the camera down and go have a coughing fit. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Chrissy. They talk too much. Yep. All right. No, no. All right. We ready? Yep. Welcome back to Today and You. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We are here live this morning on Z93, Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com, and the FTS Automotive Facebook Live feed. Thank you all for tuning in. Next up, we have Leanne McCall and Angel Medell here in the studio with Teresa and myself. Now, you are with the Yuma Coyotes American Youth Football... Flag football clinic. There, there's a lot of names there going on. <laughs> yeah, it's a mouthful, but we'll get through it. Don't worry. <laughs> well, first off, we have to say that Leanne is Janice's sister. I knew whoop, whoop. you guys were going to say that. <laughs> Your whole life. We can't get away from that ever. Your no, whole we have, life. To, we have to let everybody know. Well, if I'm on here long enough, I might start telling her secrets. But oh, okay, oh, let's oh, keep. Yes. Let's keep let's go to break. We're going to break. <laughs> <laughs> talk about football today so <laughs> all right well there is a free clinic coming up on the 24th and we want you to share the details right we're gonna have a flag football free clinic on march the 24th at oc johnson school it's gonna be an all-day event 
and again it's free so you can you can come in as a as a solo as an individual or you can you know come in as a coach with a, a team and yeah. um, if you don't have a full team we'll add kids to your team it's all based on age so we're not going to be having little guys play with bigger guys so it'll all be you know organized like as most teams are by age and it's flag football it's flag yeah. football so some of the the concerned <laughs> mamas out there right you know, it's, it's a little safer it's not gonna it be full safer. contact no it's not gonna be full contact we'll okay. save that for another portion of the, of the <laughs> radio <laughs> <laughs> all right well, safe. well, well yes. is safe says the coach angel <laughs> yes. now the event is free but if someone wants to come and hang out and their kids are participating and playing throughout the day they will have concessions available for purchase that will be separate yes. so yes. still bring some money out so you can uh, feed yourself and Absolutely. your other kids yes. that yes. might be there now it is a free event but you prefer that they register yes uh, we would like them to register online on our site at uh, you my AYF um, at gmail.com um, the reason is they're in the system and then we take account of how many kids so we kind of have we're going in there with we have 20 uh, 9 11 year olds so we can already have a team split in mind when we go do this Okay, and that the website is yumaayf.com. Right. I think you gave yes. the email too. Yeah, but yeah. if you yes. yeah, you can fill out the registration online at yumaayf.com. That's right. And this is in honor of Epilepsy Awareness Day. Yes, that's right. So we're working in conjunction with that organization just to bring awareness. That's what it's all about. And um, you know, there's a lot of uh, organizations that get awareness, breast cancer, you know, cancer in any form. But um, there, there are some that we can bring to the forefront of people's minds, um, even if it's just for the day. So. Uh, absolutely. Now, Angel, I don't know if this is a family member. I'm not sure how to say it. C H O N A. Chona. 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 Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yay, Angel and Leanne representing our league. Yay. <laughs> that's his wife yes. <laughs> I tried to get her to come but she chickened out <laughs> well she's on Facebook so oh, she's halfway here okay. Okay. <laughs> so and you said it says here that it's a flag football clinic is it are you going to be doing like a little clinic kind of going through the motions letting them know how to play or is it going to be more of gameplay I'll let Angel talk about our clinics that have been ongoing and then about the day okay okay well we've been having clinics every Sunday or every other Sunday so far mm -hmm. at Carver and it's just to teach them more about football mm -hmm. so they're ready for the season coming up I see. <clears throat> this clinic is gonna base on teaching them how to play the flag game okay coming up so toward the end of the clinic we're gonna have little little games we'll split the teams so that clinic will be based more on teaching them more of an offensive style how to catch a ball how to go Pull flags because there's a big difference from pulling flags. How to flags. work with other people on the field yeah. instead of an individual like we've been doing at the clinics. We're Harvard. working with the team. Yeah, yes. that's very more, important. More of coming together as a team. What position are you? Mm -hmm. Why is that position important? Running routes, things like that. It's all. But football is very intense. Yes. And <laughs> it's it's intense to watch it as as a wife with my family. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's intense to see my boy on the field. And, um, you know, but it, it's all about teaching them from a young age just how to, the concept of it. So we take away the tackle portion of it for these clinics so there's not that fear from parents or from the kids mm -hmm. of getting hit. Because running a route is running a route, whether you're doing it in a flag, in a touch football, or in a tackle football. Yeah. Right. That's basal knowledge. So that's what we're trying to accomplish with the clinics. Yeah. All right, and, and again, it's ages 5 through 14, mm -hmm. but they right. will be broken down into separate age right. groups. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I see it's 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Right. It's, it's going to be broken up into different little workshops or things throughout mm -hmm. the day, so it's right. not, yes. they will not be running routes or doing this and that for, for oh, that no, entire no. time. Hours. No, no we have, we'll have about four to five stations of one will be pulling flags, the other will be catching a ball, how to throw a ball, uh, how to break down to pull a flag because there's difference from running for me running to you to pull a flag than there is when you're running toward me to break down to pull a flag okay so by the time when we get to the games they'll have some kind of concept in their mind of how to do it so it's okay if they've never played before yeah. to come on out that's what I'm going to say is that we want to make sure that everybody knows that even if your child has never t boy or girl has never touched a football to come on out to this clinic and we'll we'll break it down for you so by the time you get into that organized game you're ready to roll and lunch will be provided for yep. the participants. Yes. Who's mm -hmm. providing lunch? 
um, donations. Okay. Yes. So that that's <coughs> why we're here today is if you're interested in supporting um, our our league. You know, we're a nonprofit based uh, league and that we, we accept or uh, donations, uh, tax credit donations, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So um, so we can provide these types of things for the students. If they're interested in donating, how do they go about getting a hold of you? That would be either through our website, the yumaayf.com. We, ha we actually have a donation portion on our oh, website. Yeah. And then um, you could always email at yumaayf at gmail.com and that goes right to our board president. Perfect. And again, it's, it could be monetary. Are you looking for food donations for that day? Anything? Anything. Any, anything Perfect. Yeah. Anything will work because the kids will eat it. Yes, <laughs> they will. They're going to be hungry. They're going to be looking up an appetite. Again, that's coming up at O.C. Johnson Elementary School, March 24th, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., ages 5 to 14. Lunch is provided. Um, get your registrations in now. That way you guys get a head count and make sure yeah. you have enough food yeah. for It just everybody. helps us for organizational yeah. purposes. It's, it, if you didn't do it and you want to come that day and you wake up and you decide you want to do it, come on down. Mm -hmm. But if you have already know that you've carved out that day, go ahead and pre-register. It just helps us. So when you get there, we're organized and ready to go. Will there be a cap on the number of participants? Um, you know, we haven't even gotten that far yet, just yeah. because we kind of have to wait to see who registered. Okay. Um, but, you know, I mean, we have enough personnel that we could probably handle who comes our way. All right. Perfect. Well, let, let's make that happen. Yes. yes. Let's see <laughs> as many of our youth out there That's as possible. Right. <coughs> Boys or girls? Yes, boys it's or open girls. open to, to, you know, yep. boys or girls ages 5 through 14. So we don't want any 18-year-olds out there thinking they're going to be the yep. big <laughs> boss. Yeah. They can volunteer. Oh, they'll be, they'll be out there. We'll put them to work as coaches exactly. and helpers. Right. <laughs> All right. right. Now, if we were to have hmm, 20 people comment really quick and say, Leanne, tell us the story about Janice, would that work? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Maybe I should raise the stakes to 25. <laughs> <laughs> I think people work for it a little bit. Maybe I might at the end tell you off air what I used to call her, what her nickname was. For oh, oh, yes. You could just say it on air. Yeah, just yes. say it. Just say it. Because we call her Food Delicious. <coughs> My, our grandfather used to call her Nanners because she liked to eat bananas a lot. Oh. And, uh, and for those of you that don't know, Janice is seven years older than me, so yes. I am younger, and um, I couldn't say that. I, I couldn't say that word when I was little, and so I started calling her Nanu, and I called her that forever. And she especially loved it when we were in grocery stores, and I would yell it from aisles away. Nanu, <laughs> 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 <Aww, laughs> cute. So now they know. <laughs> and that was during Mork and Mindy time. So then I always got oh, made fun of. Oh, yeah, oh, that's right. That's two Mork and Mindy references since Thursday because wow. we were talking about. About Mark's <coughs> suspenders at midnight at the ah, Oasis at the rally on Maine, mm -hmm. which I did see you there. Yeah, too, I was by the there. way, <laughs> <laughs> little says sibling rivalry. That's right. <laughs> gotta love it. Gotta this love is the place it. where we come to talk all kinds of trash about our siblings because normally they can't retaliate. But right. well, well, just don't give Janice the mic, okay? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't get it till Friday. Oh, she talks enough on it already. I've heard her talking about me before. So she <laughs> All Love right. In we want to thank Leanne and Angel so much for stopping in today. Again, right. the website, if you'd like any information, you can go to yumaayf.com and either register, make a donation, find out more details about the league. Right. And yes. you can also register for our tackle for football our tackle that's football. coming up. So that league will be starting at the end of July with practice. And then we start games in August and they run, depending on how far you go into the playoffs through November. Um, and we do have information on that. It is, it is tackle football that we offer for 8- to 14-year-olds, and that'll be a registration fee of $300. They walk away with um, a, a home jersey, an away jersey, a duffel bag, socks. So you yeah. do get to keep some of that uh -huh. registration fee. And then we do offer flag football during the regular season, too, for 5- to 7-year-olds to continue that, that learning time. And that's a registration fee of $125. And that goes towards, um, they get a, a jersey, they get a, like a, one of those cinch bags and socks to go with that. So we are here to talk about not only the event on the 24th, but actually getting people involved in our actual league. Because right. it's a good time to get your son <coughs> or daughter, if they plan on playing high school, you got to get them in tackle at an early age. Yes, you do. Yeah. You have to start them it's, young. There's the, you it's know, the safest way. It is. You want to get the fundamentals down, yes. but playing together as a team and knowing That's, how to how to work with others is yep. very yeah. important. And and take direction from a coach, from adults, 
and um, you know that really is uh, sports teaches a large amount of your life lessons how you how you can work in an environment as an adult because you can take feedback and not mm -hmm. not you know get very upset about that like some constructive on me. criticism yeah and so um, it really helps with that and we are continuing our, our clinics at Carver every other Sunday and those are five dollars a piece and they run for an hour and a half and like we said we're always looking for donations and for sponsors we know there's a lot of people in our community that support football and support athletics in general and and you know we'd really like to to hear from you and and you know see if we can get a partnership rolling yeah all right Sounds good great information i encourage awesome. anything that gets our our kids out there and active and yeah. not yeah. sitting on those devices all day long that's yeah. right <laughs> all right leanne and angel thank you both so much for coming in today You're it's welcome. time for our lotus day spot and salon selfie out in the courtyard we'll be back after the break with pamela local author and illustrator can't wait for this next one We'll be back on Today in Yuma on Z93, Outlaw Country, Monster Media, Yuma.com, and the FTS Automotive Facebook Live feed. Come on out and get into our gallery. The thing is, if you know your information, yeah, you're good to go. Yeah, some people get so nervous. Like, oh, you wrote the press release. You Cute shoes. Cute outfit. Well, I didn't know I'm matching. You're matching everybody. See, Janice could get the memo. I know. I, oh, I even got some red in. Oh, oh wait, way to throw me under the bus, Angel. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I got black. Right. Smile. Thank you guys so much. Hey, Teresa, hey, no can you take this in and say, I'm going to grab another coffee? Yeah. Do you have some in your drawer? Um, Please my top, dirt if you're like <laughs> in my chair, <laughs> that top drawer on the left, there's okay. there's those cough drops in there. Janice can get a shot of it on me. She's grabbing a pop drop. Oh, it's probably locked. Okay. This one is a work in progress. I wanted them to get an idea. Oh, okay. Well, do you know what? Here, let's do. Here. And then you can... Oh, that's right wonderful. Here. It fits. Yeah. And then Janice can come over here and get a shot of it from this angle, too. A minute. What do you say your last name? Drapala? Drapala. Okay. Drapala. I butchered it. Okay. Something. <laughs> okay. All right. Hello, ladies. Drapala. Drapala. <laughs> your sister's behind you. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. Thanks for coming in on such short notice. All right, we ready? Got this is usually seconds. how our days go. It's the chaos of it's everything. It's very yeah. quick. Alone together. <laughs> and one of the gentlemen from the core was the dad message through my news page. Oh, <laughs> he's like, we missed it. So I'll have to, we'll have uh, to share the share, link yeah, after share that. Later. Quite, we ready? Yep. I ready? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, go ahead and pull that well, microphone. Yeah, pull the microphone right up there to you. There you go. I think it's rising up just a little bit. All right, okay. you ready? Yes. Let me get the picture. Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We want to thank Leanne and Angel for stopping by to talk about AYF football. Now, next up, we are changing gears into more of an art-related mode. We have Pamela Drapala here, a local author and illustrator. Thank you for coming in, Pamela. Thank you for having me. Now, if you are watching us on Facebook Live, we have the visuals. I love the visuals. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. Normally, radio is theater of the mind, but since we have Facebook Live and photos, we are able to share with our audience this, the painting that you have here today is called A Work in Progress. Well, or name, it's, a, it's a work in progress. It is a work in progress, <laughs> correctly. I hope to have it done for the Yuma County Fair. That's this April. Well, even though it's a work in progress, it looks beautiful already. Thank you so much. <laughs> it really does. Um, and so why don't you kind of give us a little background of um, who you are and what you do? 
Um, my name is Pam, and uh, my family's been here since 1860s. Wow. Um, we are one of the original families here in New Arizona. Um, in reference to the farm worker series, uh, I started taking photographs back in 1989. Mm -hmm. That's a few years ago. <laughs> just a couple. Yes, just a couple. I went back to school. I wanted to get an art degree and also uh, get one in English, which I did eventually by going to AWC and then NAU Yuma. Uh -huh. And the results of painting all those paintings and writing all those stories and poetry, etc., I was able to get a book out of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. My friends, they kept um, saying to me and encouraging me, you have all the information, Pam, so why don't you make a book? So I did just that. Well, we have you here because you are participating in a Garden Talk and Tea Series tomorrow at the Sanguinetti House Museum, and you will have this book with you. It's called The Fruitful Yuma Valley Stories of Yuma's Farm Workers. Correct. And that is, you actually brought it in today. Can you slide that over here, Pam, so Janice can get a, a shot of it for Facebook Live? Certainly. And I saw you speaking with our, our Marines that were here earlier. Yes. And, and telling them about it, too. I, I think it's amazing anytime you can share the stories, and you literally have done that. You have the stories in uh, paperback form. Now, can people purchase these books here locally? Yes, they can. They can also purchase them at tomorrow's uh, tea at the Sanguine Eddie House. I'm also at Amazon.com. All right, because you, this is not your first book. You have an, another collection out there. Yes, I have three other books. That is correct. All right, and where can those be found, and what are the titles? Um, one can be purchased online at Barnes & Noble. That is The Many Faces of Frida Kahlo an artist's interpretation. Then I have a uh, family book, which is a book of photographs, my brother and I, when we were very young. And uh, the last book that I completed last summer, it is a children's book. It's called Good Night Universe. Mm -hmm. And it talks about uh, events that when I was smaller, when I would go to sleep at night, I would have these dreams that I was flying through the universe actually could fly just like Superman <laughs> and um, how it felt how free I felt to be able to do that of course when I got older I didn't have those dreams anymore I looked it up to find out that when you become an adult you have responsibilities and therefore you're unable to go to those heights anymore when you're dreaming I would have street lights um, keeping me from being there cloud formations, big buildings. Delays. Uh, delays, yes, lots of delays. <laughs> but I can't forget those dreams because they were really awesome. And, of course, it happened way before Superman came out in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> so give uh, for, the, uh, for the listening audience, uh, give them an idea of what they can find in your book. What, what is your book about? My book is about the actual process of me going out into the field one day and speaking to people and asking them if I can please take their photographs. We're talking about many Saturdays, uh, weekends. Uh, when I would go to work, I would see them on my way to work. I worked at the desalking plant. Um, I would see them everywhere. And so uh, that gave me an opportunity to ask their permission if I could take their pictures. Uh, one story that is meaningful to me is one time I took a picture of an individual, his name was Geronimo, and he was with Lemons, and he was selling on the side of the, the um, road, and um, I asked him if I could take his picture, he said yes, and I gave him my business card, and then that night his grandson called me and asked me, would it be okay if... Uh, Grandpa can take more pictures. He likes modeling. Oh, how cute! Oh, how fun. It was wonderful. Of course, I didn't go in my book, um, but it was a wonderful story because I felt at that time I had actually connected with a person. Yes. Yes. And so after that, I did one 24 by 30 inch painting of him, and I also did a um, a sketch of him later on. Do you do your paintings off of your photographs, or do you do them out in the field? I do them off of the photographs that I take in the field. These are real people. I have heard people say, you painted my image and now it's hanging at this produce owner's uh, boardroom. Uh -huh. So these people are real are people. Real. Yes, just like the ladies here in this uh, painting here. They're all real people. Well, Pam, Pam, I love that you've connected your art with the culture, the local community. I have an aunt and she will be 90 here very soon. She's living in Oregon now, or I'm sorry, Utah. 
but she lived for most of her life in southeastern Arizona, where I'm from. Yes. And she did primarily uh, pencil sketches, but she did a lot of paintings of Native Americans in that community. I'll have to share with you some of her work because she's doing another a family history right now. That's wonderful. Of my grandmother's side because my grandma passed. But seeing, though, I love to see the local people depicted in the artwork, too. Mm -hmm. And you, you do a beautiful job. You're so very talented. Thank you. I, I can't wait to read this book and, and look through it. And uh, Teresa and I both have a passion for photography, too. Uh -huh. So that kind of all ties together. Yes. But we have a comment here on Facebook. Sherry Schultz says, Pamela is my husband's cousin. So she's watching. <laughs> so we, we encourage everyone, if you're able to do so, if your schedule will permit, go on out to the event tomorrow, the Talk and Tea series at the Sanguinetti House Museum. And they do you have a website, Pamela? Or Yes, I do. Okay. Yes. It's under uh, Sanguinetti House Museum and Gardens. And at that time, I will not be talking so much about my painting. I will be talking about actual days of the field worker. I contacted a couple of friends who grew up in that <coughs> environment and they shared with me from the very beginning, from the time they woke up until they got home at night. So you'll be able to know more about the people and that's what I'm trying to project. I'm trying to project the humanity and also how great it is that we have these people working yes. and for us so they can uh, do everything they can do with the fruits and vegetables. I mean, I love fruits and vegetables. When you go into the grocery store, sometimes you don't even think about where, where does my food come from? How does it get to that yes, point? Yes, how does it get to that point? And it gets to that point by farm workers. That's it right. It really does. Hard work. Very my, hard work. My husband and I were behind a labor bus, I think last Thursday, and it was about 7 o'clock in the evening. And I said, you know what? I go, we've already been home several hours. We're able to go do this and that. I go, they haven't even made it home to their families yet. And their day starts... Our day starts pretty early here in radio, but trust me, it's not backbreaking work like those individuals go through. And I said, they haven't even made it home to their families yet. Exactly. And, that's you know, you true. Just, a lot of times people don't have that realization yes. that it, it, it's an, uh, you know, it takes so much of their time to bring this delicious food to our tables. That's right. And that is the reason why I wrote this book, because it is dedicated to all the farm workers in the whole world, you know, to bring them to the people so the people realize well, your talk is tomorrow at the Sanguinetti House Museum. Um, it is from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tickets are $10. They are sold at the door, but you can call and reserve your seats by just giving a call to 928-782-1841. And you will have books available there? Oh, yes. Will, you be, will you be signing? Cindy's sure asking will. that. Yes, I will be signing books. I would love to see people out there um, so that they can share. We'll have to see if we can, it's right after we, we get off right at 10 o'clock, so I, know. I, I don't want to come in too late and, like, be offensive. <laughs> I'm almost sure the doors will be open. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that is taking place tomorrow, and we'll share the links for how you can mm -hmm. find Pam and the links to her different books for sale if you're not able to attend. Thank you so much for coming in. It's been our pleasure. You're very talented, and we're, we're happy to spend time with you. Thank you so much, ladies. I really do appreciate this. All right. This have is you, too. We have to, before you leave, we have to take our Lotus Day Spot and Salon selfie so we can add you to our collection because we have our own collection. Of, yes. We'll call it artwork <laughs> because the, they're wonderful people in our community. Exactly. Don't forget the text lines are open until noon today. We will be doing another drawing for a pair of tickets to see Bostics at Cocopa Casino this Saturday on the Cocopa Event Lawn. The show is at 7.30. Tickets are valued at $40 for the pair, and it's a 21 and over event. All you need to do is text the keyword WIN, W-I-N, to 928-343-0993, and we will select one winner at random from all of those entries. Now, we do have a, um, a quick note here. We received a release from... There, it's a community in San Luis, and we had them on, I think, last year. I think we did when they were getting ready to open this, this the, uh, apartment the, building. Yes, they're with the Las Brisas Apartments in San Luis, and they have a lot. What it is is they're, they're um, providing housing for the homeless veterans. They're getting mm -hmm. into a program there, and a lot of the veterans are lacking some of the essential things for their apartments. So we are looking to collect items like plates, utensils, uh, beds. If you have any size of bed, I would probably avoid king size just mm -hmm. because they may be smaller apartments that may be a, a twin or a full or double if you have access to that in bedding. Just let us know here at the station. We will coordinate with Claudia. Again, this is for Las Brisas Apartments in San Luis. 
they're looking for items for, for homeless veterans that are now in apartments. Yeah, and think anything that you would need in your apartment, whether it's dishes, plates, spoons, <coughs> um, furniture, all those kinds of things, I'm sure they're in need of, because these, vet, like Jennifer said, these were homeless veterans who now have a home. So they are looking for all those little things to touch up their houses and get the, making it feel like home. And you can contact us here, and then we'll, we will contact the, 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 all the folks over there at Las Brisas. That's right. Or give Claudia a call at 550 550- Five four zero one. Again, if you're interested in helping at all, or maybe just volunteering for the organization, sounds good. All right, we are going to sign off. Coming up next on Z ninety three, it's the Bob and Sherry Show, and on Outlaw Country, we will have AP News right at the top of the hour, and then your favorite classic country music after that. Coming up tomorrow, Sarah Wisdom from the Yuma County Library District will be stopping in. And we're going to be talking more about the assistive technology yes. that we've mentioned in the past because they have some events coming up focused around that. And you know what? Get your entries in for the Bare Naked Silk Co. gift certificate. All you need to do is go to monstermediayuma.com, click on Anita's WTF tab. Even if she's not here because I know she's under the weather, um, we will still draw a winner for that. That's right. We're hoping she feels better. But get those entries in by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. All right. It's Today in Yuma on Z93, Outlaw Country, Monster Media, Yuma. And, of course, our amazing FTS Automotive Facebook Live Feed sponsor. We will see everyone tomorrow, KCYK Yuma and KLJZ Yuma. She's going to go flip a switch and then go take the pictures with you. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Are you going to sign off? We'll see you tomorrow.